G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Your Hubs Full Driving, we're going to look at basic winching. That's winching 101 with a single vehicle. We'll also be checking out whether winch snappers do anything at all by launching them into the stratosphere, hopefully. So, let's get into it. So firstly, an apology. <laughs> now, on the thumbnail, you would have seen my Land Cruiser, and that would have been here today if it didn't break down, but the breakdown wasn't the issue. The issue was when the tow truck came, he loaded it onto the back of the truck, he didn't quite secure it, and it rolled off backwards, off the back of the, off the, back of the tow truck. And to compound issues, it stopped into the bull bar of the Zook. So there's a bit of fixing to be done. Anyway, I digress. Let's have a look at your basic winching equipment. Now, this is the bag that actually lives in the back of the Zook. Whether I'm down in Portland, driving around on the sand dunes, or down at the local supermarket picking up bread and milk, this is always in the back of the Zook. Now, firstly, gloves, a decent set of gloves. You only get one set of hands, so you want to look after them. Whether you're using steel wire rope or even synthetic rope, make sure you've got a decent pair of gloves. Soft shackles. Now, soft shackles are a great invention. I've been using them for years, but they're only appropriate in some circumstances. You'll need hard shackles as well, more than likely. Now, this is my snatch strap. We're not gonna look at snatch straps in this video, but if you're interested in snatch strap or kinetic rope use, drop a comment below. And we'll do a video about it. The snatch block, <laughs> almost dropped it. So the snatch block is used for redirecting the rope or perhaps increasing the amount of leverage from your winch, effectively making it more powerful or reducing the load on your winch, either or either. So if you're interested in this, I'll drop a link up there on how a snatch block actually works, the mathematics behind it, and how you should be rigging up one of these things to take advantage of. A tree trunk protector. A tree trunk protector is of paramount importance. We need to make sure that we're protecting the trees and we're not ring barking the trees with winch ropes by running them just around the tree trunk when we need to winch out. A tree trunk protector will not ring bark the tree and it'll allow it to be there alive and living next time we need it, next time we're back in the same spot and we get stuck in exactly the same spot. We're gonna have a live tree to winch off, which is a great thing a strap joiner or a winch rope to winch extension joiner. So you can join winch ropes to winch extensions using nothing but one of these. No hard shackles, no soft shackles, just one of these. Stick around, we'll show you how to do that. Now, in addition to this basic kit, I'd recommend everyone get a winch extension rope. They just come in handy. Now there are winch extension straps available. To be honest with you, I wouldn't give you two bob for the whole lot of them. Not that they're bad, they're just not as good as a winch extension rope. And we'll show you why later in the video. Finally, the humble winch dampener. Winch dampeners are a great thing, as far as I know. <laughs> now, we've tested them for kinetic ropes or snatch straps, and they're not worth two bob or nothing on winch ropes and snatch straps. Loaded or unloaded, they're not worth two bob of anything. Uh, just don't bother with one of these for a kinetic rope recovery or a snatch strap recovery. They're just not worth it. But for a winch recovery, are they worth anything? I don't know. But by the end of the video, both you and I will know whether you should bother with one of these. So now we know what you need, now we need to know how to use it. So I'll get the Zook stuck and we'll have a look at a couple of winching scenarios. Okay. Now we're stuck, legitimately. Let's get ourselves unstuck. Rightio, now we've secured it from inside the vehicle as best we can, it's time to secure it from outside the vehicle. And that means wheel chocks. If you're in the car yourself, well, you're gonna have to suck it up, princess, and do it yourself. But if you've got a passenger, get them to do it. Now, if you do have to get out the vehicle, make sure you're the last one out and the first one back in. It's no good if you've got the kids in the back watching them roll down the hill when you're not in control of the vehicle. So grab something from the side of the track, like this rock, chuck it under the wheel. <laughs> Piece of firewood to do as well. Now we have to do the other side, but I'm not going to walk behind the vehicle. <laughs> if it starts moving, it's going to flatten me. So I'll walk up 
and around the top of the vehicle and come back down the other side and chock the other side up. We've got the vehicle on the hill as securely as we can. We've got our park brake on, we've got the vehicle in park and we've chocked all the wheels. It's not going in here, hopefully. <laughs> but I'm out of the vehicle because I'm the only one here today. And don't forget, if you've got multiple people in the car, driver is the last one out, first one back in. Rightio, now for the stuck assessment. And this is the most critical part of the recovery. You need to work out why you're stuck. Okay, it sounds silly, but the first thing you need to do is you need to work out why you're stuck. Is it you've just run out of traction? Perhaps lowering the tire pressures would do. Or maybe traction boards. Now, we use what's called a hierarchy of recovery, and I'll link to a video up there. Maybe even traction boards. Traction boards would probably get me out of this. But this isn't a video on traction boards, this is a video on winching, so this is what we're gonna do. Now, what I like to use is what's called a three-stage process, patience, plan, and practice. So, first part, patience, exercise some patience. There's no reason that this vehicle is gonna move, so there's no rush. I see it time after time after time. People get stuck and people run to do the recovery and that's where mistakes happen. The only time you might need to get a boogie on is perhaps an incoming tide. Other than that, leave it there, it's not going anywhere. Make a decent assessment as part of having that patience. And then plan, make a plan. Well, for this one, we're going to do a winch recovery and that's our plan. And then we need to plan out that winch recovery and then practice, put your plan into practice and don't forget always have a plan b what happens if i try to do a single line pull and it the winch just isn't strong enough to drag myself out it probably will be with this car but let's say you've got a double cab 79 with a induction cooktop and and an air fryer single line pull probably isn't going to cut the mustard on that one so you might need to do a double line pull because it's bogging down the winch too much anyway let's get into the winching and see how we're going to set that up so now we need to attach the winch controller now make sure your winch controller is stored where it's accessible from the driver's seat don't be like one of my mates who got stuck on a hill like this and i said mate i'll give you a hand where's your winch controller and he says oh it's in the rear drawers so both rear swing outs had to come out then both the doors, barn doors on this vehicle, had to be open, and then the draw caught me <laughs> on the way out, of course. Finally got his winch controller, and then had to struggle to put it all back together again. This is, of course, after we secured the vehicle, and then I'm working behind a vehicle which isn't tethered to a tree or another vehicle. I wasn't too happy about that situation. Anyway, make sure it's accessible from your driver's seat. Now, these things are an electrical component, so they suffer from bad connections. Okay, especially at the front here. So that gets a lot of water and mud, maybe even a salt water from the beach in there, a bit of sand or whatever, and it'll all cause corrosion. So to abate that, you can spray them down with a bit of WD-40 or CRC spray, or maybe a bit of Vaseline even, or if you're a pedant, a bit of dielectric grease, and that'll never go astray. Rightio, so we connect her up. And of course, if you've got an isolator, you will need to disconnect your isolator so your winch actually works and run it out just half a second. Just so we got a bit there, now you'll be able to go for a free spool. So your free spool is located on one end of your winch and should be accessible through your bull bar. And the holes seem to be getting smaller and smaller, for my hands anyway. So we'll run the free spool around. There we go, we just moved it from one side to the other. And then we should be able to run the winch rope out. Now, when you're running your winch rope out, don't even start looking for an anchor. Run your winch rope out until you're on the bottom layer of your winch and you've only got about four or five wraps of the synthetic rope on that bottom layer of your winch. And we'll tell you why in a second. But now, let's run that winch rope out. So we've run the rope out until we've got about four wraps on that bottom layer. And we've ended up here right next to this tree conveniently, but this is by no means the closest tree to the stuck zook on the hill. The reason we've done that is because if you have a look at your specifications, and I'll pop up the specifications for my winch on the screen there, you'll be able to see that as you put layers of rope 
on that winch from the first layer, it progressively gets less powerful. So it might be 9,000 pound winch or thereabouts on the bottom layer, but by the time you get four or five layers on that rope, it might be a 6,000 pound winch. Or for the same amount of load, let's say you have to recover with one and a half tonne of load. If you go on the bottom layer, you'll actually use less current from your battery than you will on your top layer. Now for extended winches, just quickly, if you're doing an extended winch, winch for 30 seconds, give it a minute, rest it for a minute. Winch for 30 seconds, rest it for a minute. And that way your battery has a chance to catch up, gets charged from your alternator and everything gets a chance to cool down. But most recoveries with winch recoveries, they're usually one car length. Anyway, let's join it up. So we've got our tree trunk protector here and we're gonna run it around our live tree. Now we're gonna run it around near the bottom of our live tree. And the reason is we have less mechanical advantage on that tree, which is a good thing for the tree. And make sure the strap is flat. Right, so we've got a nice flat strap there. And we've got a bow shackle on the end here. This of course is a rated bow shackle. It's a four and three quarter ton. And then you get your bow shackle or your D-ring is sometimes called. You put the eyes, the two eyes from your tree trunk protector into the bow of your D-ring or your bow shackle. And then we get the eye and we run that through. Pop your pin in. And when you're doing this, what's made it a little bit easier for me over the journey is put the pin in from the top. As they say, screw down, don't screw up. Right now, now we've got the connection there, let's head back to the vehicle. So we're back at the Zook and we need to put some tension on the line before we start winching. So don't let the line slip through your hands. There's a bit of a mistake. So as we're pulling it in, we'll just run it in a little bit. And we're there now. We need to re-engage the free spool if you haven't already. Now, one of the most critical parts is to go and check your rigging. So we'll go and do that now. Okay, now it's time to check the rigging. Firstly, to your bow shackle. And check that it's evenly loaded and done up properly and it's not side loading. That means it needs to be loaded end to end. One on the pin, one in the bottom of the bow, not side to side. Now, with your tree trunk protector, that needs to be flat all the way around and go and visually inspect it. Yep, that looks good, and it's at the bottom of the tree too. So we're ready to go from this end. One final thing, winch dampener. Now for the winch dampener. Now these things come with pockets on the inside, like this one here, and you can fill that up and put a bit of extra weight in there to make the dampener hopefully a bit more effective. Put something like dirt in there, or perhaps sand, don't go filling it up with bow shackles and snatch blocks, okay? That's not a great idea. Don't put anything in there that you're not happy to be hit with, really. So for me, it's a toilet paper and tissues. Anyway, let's put it on. Now, if you don't have a winch dampener, heavy blanket, dry as a bone, something like that, and we're running them up the winch cable. Usually, I try and put it in the middle third of the rigging, and you might have to stop your winching procedure to move the dampener. So keep an eye on that as well. Rightio, on with the winching. Now, one thing you'll notice before I can actually start the winching is I need to get from the left-hand side of the car to the right-hand side of the car, because this is a right-hand drive car. So I have to go from here to over there, but I can't step over the line. This is a live line, okay? There's tension on this line. 
you don't want to be stepping over a live line, especially the gentleman of breeding age, <laughs> okay? So what I'll have to do is I'll have to walk up and around that anchor point and back down the other side. You don't walk behind the car because the car can still potentially, if something were to let go in your winch, roll back down the hill and flatten you. So you walk up and around and back down. But let's say you can't, for the terrain, for some reason, get around the top. Well, you're gonna to have to get from one side to the other. And this is how you do it safely. And again, I stress, if you can go around, go around. But if you can't, this is how you do it. You get up, and it's all about situational awareness. You walk on it as you go over, okay? You have to go back over the other side, walk on it. Now this rope isn't under a lot of tension at the moment, so it's not too much of a drama. And again, walk around if you can. Now, if you have to get over a loaded rope, which is suspended from the ground. Again, once you're on hook, you don't want to get off hook. This is how you do it. And again, I stress this is a last resort. Walk around, don't be bloody lazy, walk around. So you get both gloved hands. You place both gloved hands on the loaded winch rope. One foot over, second foot over, and then let go. Again, don't take that lightly. Only do it when you definitely can't get from one side to the other because of the tension in the line. Otherwise, walk around the top and come back down the driver's side. Okay, let's get on the winching. Now that one's out of the road. Now it's time to do the winching. Firstly, put your foot on the brake, start the vehicle, and pop the selector into neutral, not into drive, and disengage the park brake. Now, slowly take your foot off the brake until you're resting on that winch rope. And we're ready to go. Winch in for 30 seconds. Okay, so we're at the 30 second mark and we're gonna give that winch a break. <laughs> Cause as you can hear, it was slowing down a bit and that was telling me that there was extra load on the winch itself. So we'll give it a few seconds and we'll get back into it. A few moments later. So we've probably given it a minute now. So let's get back into another 30 seconds of winching. Rightio. I'm pretty sure I can drive from here, so the winch is essentially completed. But I have to stop and secure the vehicle and see if it's going to sit here first. And take the tension off the winch. No problems. The winch is done, but we're still on hook. So we're not safe yet. We need to get it off hook. Yell safe so everyone around, if there's anybody with you, understands that you're off hook. And then we can continue to drive off. Okay, let's see if we can get it stuck a second time. That looks stuck to me. Let's winch it out. So we're just as stuck as before. <laughs> now we need to get ourselves out. But this time, we're going to use a pulley block for a double line pull. So we're going to give ourselves some mechanical advantage. Actually, we're going to give the winch some mechanical advantage. Couple of benefits there. It reduces the load by almost half on the winch, and it usually slows down the winching by about half, depending on the performance of your winch. So things, if they're going wrong, will happen more slowly. Remember, we're not competition driving here. So if things go wrong more slowly, it gives you more time to stop and react. So that's actually a good thing. So let's have a look at how we're gonna rig up the pulley block onto the anchor point. Now at the anchor point end, we've got our tree trunk protector around our tree, around our live tree, just as before. And we've got our bow shackle and we've got our winch line. Now, of course, one end runs to the winch and the other end will run eventually to our rated recovery point. And here is our pulley block or our split sheave. And to use them, all we do is split it, run the rope through it, put it through our bow shackle. Remember, screw down, don't screw up. With that done, make sure it's running in the groove of the pulley and we'll meet you back at the other end now, at the business end. So all that's left to do now is to terminate 
our rated bow shackle onto our rated recovery point. But one quick question, well, is it live yet? I mean, if this were to head down the hill under its own steam, at any stage, would this line become taut? Let's find out. There we go. Yep, we're live. Even though it's not terminated down the other end to our rated recovery point, if we were to head down the hill, eventually there would be tension on this winch rope. So we are live. Anyway, let's go back and actually do the termination. So there you go. Learn something new every day. Even though it wasn't terminated at the recovery point in, it's still live. It's still potentially dangerous. So let's make it actually live live, I suppose. Now we can bring some tension into the line using the winch. Now with that done, let's go and check the other end. So again, what we're looking for is a nice flat tree trunk protector right around close to the base of the tree. The bow shackles done up properly. And this time that our winch line is running cleanly through the groove in the pulley block. And that looks pretty good. So let's get winching. And when it comes to putting the dampeners on a double line pull, don't forget on your static line, and this is a static line heading back to the recovery point, that won't move. However, the other line that runs back to your winch will head towards your winch. So you may have to stop the winching in order to move the dampener. Rightio, better jump in the vehicle and get it up the hill. Okay, just as before, we'll start the vehicle, pop it into neutral, not park, disengage the park brake, slowly disengage the foot brake. And we'll come on to that tension, that rigging. Nice and slowly, there we go. Now we can winch for 30 seconds and uh, stop for th a minute maybe. And you'll hear the difference, but there'll be less stress on the winch and you'll hear it running easier. So let's go into it, 30 seconds. Okay, so we'll give it a rest now and we'll go again. A few moments later. Okay, so it's been about a minute. Let's winch it again. We might need to give it one more go. Rightio, I'm pretty sure I could drive from there. But what I'm gonna do is, again, just like before, I'm gonna put it in neutral, park it up, and then put it in park, and take the tension off the winch, and see if the vehicle's gonna sit there, which it is. So we're right to stop, jump out, and disconnect our winch. So whilst I'm out here on my Pat Malone today, that's not always gonna be the case for me, and I'm sure you either. So you need to set up exclusion zones, where people, who are not directly involved with the recovery are out of the road. Now the rule of thumb is one and a half times the distance from the vehicle to the anchor point. So let's say it's 10 metres from the vehicle to the anchor point, then you set up an exclusion zone of 15 metres. But I don't think that goes quite far enough. I think the 15 metres is okay, but it needs to be perpendicular. So at right angles to the middle of the recovery, because you've got to remember if anything lets go, it'll go towards the anchor point, it'll go towards the car. So you don't want anyone behind the car, because if it lets go, it'll go possibly through the car and take them out. And that's what you don't need to ruin your day of four wheel driving. So set up your exclusion zone, just like the diagram, and we'll all have happy days. Anyway, let's get on to how we're gonna join a strap without even a bow shackle or a soft shackle. So let's say your anchor point is further away than the length of your winch rope. You're going to have to join an extension onto it in order to reach your anchor point. And that's great, but how are you gonna join your winch rope to your extension? Now I use extension ropes as opposed to straps exclusively. First reason is they can go through a pulley block, no problems. Second reason I'm about to show you now. So how would you join your winch rope to your extension strap? 
or your extension rope in this case. Well, bow shackle, no one wants to put metal in the middle of their rigging. What about a soft shackle? Decent solution, but we can get rid of that too. How about just a bung? And this doesn't actually do the joining. This just stops it from becoming a permanent fixture. Let's show you how. So I've got my winch rope. Now this is the end of my winch rope and you'll notice something a bit different about it. And that is, it's a soft die. There is no thimble in there. And we'll show you why. Firstly, we'll get one end of our extension rope. And we'll just pop it over the top. Then we'll get the other end of our extension rope. And we'll go in from underneath. There we go. Now all we have to do is run this completely through from one end to the other. I'll fast forward this bit for you. Righto. Now for the Boy Scouts amongst you, <laughs> or girl guides, you'll know that as a reef knot. And that'd work fine, but it'd become permanent. Which is great if you want a 50 metre winch rope and no one wants that. So all you need to do is put your bung in there and we have a connection which will take the full weight of the rope and you'll be able to get it undone afterwards. And I've used this trick on plenty of occasions and it works like a champion. Anyway, what about the dampeners? Now, we've already shown that these things aren't any good for kinetic ropes or snatch straps, but what about for winch rope? <laughs> Let's go set it up. Let's get him shooting into the stratosphere. But before we watch the winch dampeners try and reach low earth orbit, I thought I'd show you the setup. It's janky. Yes, I'm kind of proud and I'm kind of scared. Anyway, we've got our insert in the tow hitch there that's connected by a grade 70 chain and that runs up to that tree trunk protector and tree there. Rightio, now from the front of the Zook. Obviously got the Winch joined up there, and we'll run the winch line down. Oh, and then we've got the load cell readout. Now, it's only reading a couple hundred kilograms at the moment, just enough to hold it up in the air. But we'll be putting a bit more than that on it, and that runs down to this pulley block there. Right now, I'll go around the other side so you can have a look at the release mechanism. And here we go. Here's our 12 ton load cell, and there's our release mechanism. And that will try and shoot. <laughs> this winch dampener here towards this tree here, where it's terminated at that tree. And I put a bit of a max tracks there, I'll prod that up in a second, just so we don't damage the tree, because that's very important. All right, on with the testing. So in the first test, we'll be doing a control, and that is no dampener on a plain bare synthetic rope with a ton of load on it. Let's have a look at that. Okay, here's our control with about a ton. Now, let's check out the slow-mo. <laughs> And now the same synthetic rope with approximately the same load with an unweighted dampener on it. Let's check that out now. Yeah, awesome. That broke. Well, we'll never know. <laughs> well, it looks like <laughs> that's the end of the testing. I just broke the winch rope. Bugger. Anyway, guys, 
it looks like that might be a whole other video by itself. Now, if you like this video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not thrice, but twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you'll get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks.